Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You know the old saying, one man's trash is another man's treasure? Well, right now my buddy's at work, so I'm going through his garbage to see if I can find any treasure. But right now, all I can see is trash. Hey, what are you doing? One Crab's Trash is the episode where Mr. Crab sells SpongeBob a soda drink hat before finding out what it's worth, and then tries to get it back upon realizing its value. Like Snowball Effect, this episode aired on February 22nd, 2002, and it's the episode that gives a reason as to why Nickelodeon is betraying Steven Hillenburg's legacy, and why the Muppets are currently being treated in a way that original creator Jim Henson never wanted. Am I really gonna defile this grave for money? Of course I am! It's also the second episode of Season 3 with an animated title card, the first being Episode 88, Idiot Box. Now since we just discussed my favorite episode of the series last time, I always prefer to see that one over this one. I remember finding this episode on the Fear of a Krabby Patty DVD when I was a kid, saw One Crab's Trash on there, and didn't see Snowball Effect. I didn't own the Spongebob Christmas DVD at the time, but when I finally got it, I was so happy to see Snowball Effect on here. But that didn't mean I didn't like this episode, far from it. I was just a kid, and sometimes when you have a favorite something as a kid, no matter what, you only want to consume that and very little else. I still like to watch this episode in reruns, but still would say that its sister episode was my favorite. But enough ramble, let's finally watch this episode and see the number one whose grave was disturbed. So the episode starts up and Mr. Krabs started a yard sale by grabbing things from the garbage and claiming they were antiques since he saw all trash as treasure. Yeah, I don't see it. A man came up and wanted an umbrella for a buck fifty while Mr. Krabs insisted on ten dollars despite it being full of holes. They eventually agreed on five bucks, and Mr. Krabs was satisfied with scamming him. Spongebob and Patrick showed up and started looking around. Patrick recognized a toilet plunger, but Mr. Krabs claimed it was a 17th century soup ladle, so Patrick paid more money than necessary. Spongebob saw a soda drinking hat with number one printed on it, and Mr. Krabs said that Spongebob was one of those number ones. Spongebob was overjoyed and made an agreement with Mr. Krabs to make two payments for the hat. After they left, some shoppers, or collectors, I can't tell the difference, came up and offered Mr. Krabs increasingly higher prices for the hat, up to one million dollars, making Mr. Krabs realize how much it was worth, and tried to get it back somehow. He found Spongebob blowing bubbles from the hat, and tried talking to Spongebob claiming the hat makes him look like a girl. Man, there's a lot from this episode I don't get. Spongebob didn't want to give the hat back because he was so happy with it, so Mr. Krabs left. Later that day, he came up to Spongebob again with more novelty hats. He offered an air conditioning hat, a juicer hat, and one that said Foxy Grandpa. Spongebob still didn't want to trade and went inside. I would have traded for the juicer hat alone. This hat isn't a juicer hat, damn it! Mr. Krabs felt he had no other option but to scare the hat off of Spongebob. He only had three ideas? Later that night, while Spongebob was asleep, he drew a picture of a ghost and swung it inside to scare him. Spongebob woke up and got scared thinking the ghost was real. Mr. Krabs' voice claimed that the soda drink hat was cursed and said that it belongs to somebody who passed away, Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen. Claiming that the hat had to be returned to its owner, Swanow came up and told Mr. Krabs that the name Krabs thought he made up was real. So Mr. Krabs took the shovel and went off to get the hat back, ignoring what SpongeBob said. When Mr. Krabs arrived at Floater Cemetery, he was rather spooked by everything there. Then he saw Squibber there, setting flowers down where his hopes and dreams rested. Same here, dude. Mr. Krabs started looking for Smitty's tombstone, but couldn't find it anywhere. He tried thinking of some things that Swindob said for a clue of some sort. Remember, licking doorknobs is illegal on other planets. We're not on another planet, we're on Earth. Mr. Krabs soon found the grave, foreshadowed today's rich and greedy pricks, and found Smitty's bones with the hat on his head. Mr. Krabs got the hat, 
but Smitty rose up and wanted his hat back. Mr. Krause didn't want to give it back, so the other living dead fish skeletons came up to take the hat back. So Mr. Krause grabbed a dead swordfish's head and used it to attack the skeletons. And he didn't stop until the following morning. Does that count as committing murder, even though they were already dead? He arrived back at the yard sale, and everybody else was still there. He tried to get them to start bidding, but the others laughed and explained they were now worthless because there was a warehouse full of those same hats. Swanda walked by with a clapping hat, and everybody chased after him, wanting his hat for even higher prices. Mr. Kraz was sad, Scrooge walked past and called him a baby, and the episode ends. So that was One Crab's Trash, and that is indeed a good episode. All the characters here are very strong. Patrick is hilariously oblivious, licking his sucker even when it's stuck to underwear, and thinking he got a good deal on his own plunger he rebought. I love both times Squidward popped up. Calling Mr. Krabs a baby and mourning his own hopes and dreams are both iconic. The people who want either of the hats are pretty funny even if they don't do much. I love Spongebob as a character in this episode. Sure, his gullibility is on full display since he doesn't realize he's being scammed at all throughout the episode, but he's not insufferably dumb by any means. Mr. Krabs' first two ideas on getting Spongebob to give up the hat didn't work, and his third plan backfired when Smitty Werben Jaegerman Jensen turned out to be real. His being scared of the drawing of the ghost is good too, as well as his iconic quote, It was his hat, Mr. Krabs! He was number one! It's also nice seeing him have so much fun with the hat in the first place. I think Mr. Krabs is pretty good too. I know he's the antagonist of this story, but his villainous side feels more well-rounded in this episode compared to episode 34, Arg from season 1, or 77, Jellyfish Hunter from season 2. He doesn't feel mean-spirited in this episode to me. Sure, he was scamming innocent customers at the beginning, but it's much more light-hearted in this episode compared to others. And he could have charged $100 for the umbrella, or really anything he sold at the beginning of the episode, but he didn't. He was hesitant to scare the hat off of Spongebob and use that as a last resort in case his other attempts failed. I didn't want to have to do this, but he leaves me no other option! And even when he has to do the last resort, there was no point where he tried to manipulate Spongebob into giving the hat back, similar to his manipulations in Arg or Jellyfish Hunter, when he used emotion or claimed Spongebob didn't care for the customers. And when he tricked Spongebob into thinking he was born to wear the hat, it made Spongebob a lot happier, which he clearly wasn't trying to do in the previously mentioned episodes. His best part in this one is when he's thinking of Spongebob's lines and gets nothing helpful until he finds he's in front of the grave he's looking for. His fighting skills are pretty good when he takes on the living dead, and it's satisfying seeing him sad when he finds out the soda drink hat was worthless and Spongebob has a more valuable hat. I like seeing how nervous he is when he arrives at the cemetery, showing he's got more emotions even though he's being driven by greed here. Speaking of which, I love the setting of Floater Cemetery. The greenish gray sky, the distorted looking flower clouds, and all the strange creatures there really give it a spooky vibe, and I love that. I always liked it, even as a kid, and the living dead coming out of nowhere is a shocking scene, but it's so well done. That thunderclap followed by Smitty rising up from his coffin, and the other skeletons surrounding Mr. Krabs are eerie, but so cool to watch. I also love the tombstones in the cemetery. Squidward's hopes and dreams, Old Salty, Diver Dan, Stupid, and I'm with Stupid. That tombstone there is also a lot funnier than the episode with the same title, by the way. And the number one tomb for Smitty that shows his full name is too long for the bottom, so it continues on the piece of wood. There are also the little things here, like how this guy is always in his boat, even when Mr. Krabs isn't drooling a river. The floating shopping list, and how good the sunrise looks when the fight scene is over. My only real complaint with this episode is this scene. Am I a pretty girl? Oh, well, um, you're, you're beautiful. Uh. <laughs> I never got that gag right there. The mailman came out of nowhere, and it's obvious Mr. Krabs wasn't talking to him in the first place, so I don't get why the mailman was visibly pissed. Did he think that Mr. Krabs was calling him pretty instead of Spongebob? I honestly don't get it. 
Maybe it would have been better if Patrick showed up here instead, since Mr. Krabs said he didn't want to say that in front of Patrick, but I digress. I didn't want to say this in front of Patrick. That hat makes you look like a girl. I guess if I had any other nitpicks, I wish we could have seen a bit more of Floater Cemetery, but that's not really worth talking about right now. Overall, I think this is a great episode. The tone of this episode is really good, starting off more lighthearted with Mr. Krabs having his yard sale, but changing to be more eerie when he finds himself at Floater Cemetery, to action packed with the fight scene, and then lighthearted again when the story wraps up and Mr. Krabs gets his comeuppance. All the funny gags and character moments are pretty good here too. I also like how it teaches about the dangers of scamming others. Scamming your customers will only lead to trouble and it'll come back to bite you in the ass later. That's a message to all you phone scammers, email scammers, in-person scammers, and scammers out there. STOP! The characters are strong and there's a lot in here that I like to watch over and over again. I also really liked all the hats in this episode. I wish all of them were real in real life. There is the Foxy Grandpa hat, and a hat with the number one available for purchase on the online Paramount shop. Who? Yeah, while it's nice there's a Foxy Grandpa hat and a number one hat officially produced by Nickelodeon available for online sale, why can't the number one hat actually be a soda drinking hat? If fans can take a normal, bland looking soda drinking hat and mod it to look like the hat from the episode, why can't Paramount make an official number one cursed soda drinking hat for their own online store? I know, f Nickelodeon and Paramount, I agree. One Crab's Trash is a really good episode. It definitely has a standout tone compared to its sister episode, and it also does some really good things pretty well, and I'll always love it for that too. It also teaches a really good lesson about scamming, and it's overall a pretty nicely written episode. Even if most modern rich pricks start to act that greedy in real life and get away with it in court. <laughs>